Imagine a world in which your dreams are the building blocks of reality itself, therefore enable you to create the life, career and business of your dreams, literally. Imagine a world in which you can access the source code determining your life, understand the causes behind each event, as well as optimize this source code, preventing problems from even happening and unleashing the fullness of potentials residing inside of you. Imagine a world in which duality has been transcended. Good and bad situations are both positive, welcomed sources of energy. What you deem to be your terrible flaws is as precious as the best in you. No more shame, no more guilt, just you. Imagine a world in which individuality does not mean separation between you and other people. Your level of consciousness strongly influences those around you. Your family, your friends, your colleagues, your employees, your company, all of them change and benefit from your growth without even noticing it while preserving fully their free will. Imagine a world in which there is no separation between the mind and concrete reality. Consciousness is action. Consciousness development is not only theoretical knowledge, but the ability to make things happen here, now, in this world. It is the emergence of new skills, leadership and professional skills included, achievements and wealth. At the same time, life responds to your awareness increase by changing its behavior towards you. New relationships arrive, new situations and opportunities start to happen. Imagine above all a life that makes sense to you and those around you. I am Cavalier, a consciousness designer. I am the author of the book Paradigm of Sense, a guide to the consciousness of the fifth dimension. This methodology leads to superior consciousness and the power to create the life of your dreams, literally. Professionals achieve top performance and businesses higher results. Above all, it enables you to change the behavior of life towards you. You can find out more about this work on my website Cavalier.com. The link will be in the description. For 24 years, I have been providing people and businesses with techniques to comprehend with clarity and precision what are the mechanisms operating in their unconscious mind and their pneumatic mind, determining concrete consequences in their lives and businesses. This is a series of three videos. The first video focused on how very concrete things like your behaviors, relationships, professional skills, your business, clients, and even the economy and politics are strongly influenced by the unconscious mind. The second video showed how to use a few mechanisms of the unconscious to drastically improve your life, career, and business. In the last video, you will see what are the psychological algorithms and how to access and optimize the source code determining your life in order to prevent problems from even happening and develop the fullness of potentials residing in yourself and your life. And now, prepare for a ride through the backstage of reality. If you want to enter this world, the first thing you need to know is what are psychological algorithms. When we become teenagers, we suddenly become aware of our sexuality. It does not appear out of thin air. It was there all along. Our bodies even had visible physical organs for that. Despite that, we remained unaware, unconscious of our sexuality until adolescence when it is presented to our consciousness. Something inside us knows things we are unaware of, unconscious of. That thing is the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is a sophisticated type of intelligence. It is the sum of all the potentials present in ourselves and the force that directs us towards developing these potentials. When the unconscious mind makes a move, we become conscious of what has always existed, what has always concretely existed, but would only be perceived 
and become part of the conscious life at a later point. The unconscious mind does that by using images. For example, in adolescence, images of the kind of people attractive to us start to cross our minds, steering our perception towards sexuality. If we cannot stop to think about someone, we may discover that we are in love with that person. If we engage into imaginary fights that happens for hours just inside our heads, we may figure out what is unacceptable for us and find the energy to position ourselves against it. The images deployed into our consciousness by the unconscious mind work as a new app installed in a computer that allows it to perform new tasks. That's why I call these images psychological algorithms. They determine what elements of ourselves and of life we can perceive. Therefore, our characteristics and skills, the kind of situation we experience, and the kind of people with whom we engage. When enough psychological algorithms are in place and somewhat coherent, they become fixed. This is what is called an identity, which we use to describe ourselves and how we see reality. When you mention your characteristics, skills, tastes, and views about other people and situations, you are basically describing the set of psychological algorithms that are conscious to you. However, as soon as we define who we are, we also define who we are not and what we think life is not. These definitions are also psychological algorithms and constitute things that we prohibit ourselves to be and distance ourselves from people and situations who are. Whatever is prohibited is never consciously experienced and remains automatically unconscious. These prohibitions also become unconscious psychological algorithms that are very effective at keeping you distant from what is unconscious. You don't even see it. As a result, most people remain stuck in their identities and the story of their lives forever, never experiencing anything beyond their narrow limitations and being proud of it. They rarely change in a significant way are happily imprisoned in their routine, only live in bubbles, together with people who are like them and think the same. Their businesses lack diverse teams, creativity and innovation. Nevertheless, it is indeed necessary to have an identity and the unconscious mind invests in doing so. After all, one needs to start somewhere. However, the unconscious mind is way more ambitious than that. Its ultimate goal is to overcome identity and increase your consciousness until it encompasses everything, which means that you open your mind to everything and is able to do everything. The ultimate goal of the unconscious mind is the totality, wholeness. In order to facilitate that, the methodology I created, the paradigm of sense, uses the images present in dreams and natural processes of the unconscious mind to assist you to progressively uncover, optimize, and even rewrite your psychological algorithms. This way, your awareness extends to immensely wider horizons, expresses itself in numerous new skills, engages in more diverse relationships, and experiences a variety of other situations boosting creativity and innovation. Given the fact that some psychological algorithms firmly restrain you to your identity and worldview, and others automatically prohibit you from experiencing and even perceiving other perspectives, how can you develop your consciousness beyond your identity? The unconscious mind is paradoxical. On the one hand, it maintains the algorithms that created your identity and afterwards limit you. On the other hand, however, it creates a phenomenon that, when comprehended, shatter your limitations and open entirely new horizons. Dreams. Dreams submerge you in scenarios that you would not experience or comprehend while awake. Dreams feel 100% real because they are real. Since you experience those scenarios for real, you have a glimpse of the potential consciousness lying there. 
Then all you have to do is to integrate them into the consciousness and life you already have. Let's use a concrete example in order to understand these many mechanisms, how they operate on a concrete level, and how to use them to develop your potentials and strongly influence your life and your business. One of my clients was the co-founder and COO of a company. As most of us, she was educated to be a good professional, a polite woman, and a nice girl. Her conscious psychological algorithms were therefore being professional, polite, and agreeable. Nonetheless, she became increasingly and uncontrollably overwhelming, explosive, and destructive, to the point of being accused of being a toxic person. Her education did not allow destructiveness and toxicity to be a part of her personality, her identity. So they were completely prohibited for her, and this prohibition became an unconscious psychological algorithm. She is not the only one. Most children are taught to be polite, pretend, and obey in all circumstances. This is considered to be good. They are not allowed to clearly dislike other people or resist against any order given to them. Most parents do not allow their children to freely express their rage against those who were unpleasant, unfair, authoritarian, or even harmful against them. Destruction is never ever allowed. Many professionals perpetuate their child behavior by being polite and obeying their unpleasant, unfair, and authoritarian bosses. C-levels and leaders are deprived of authority and power because strong and assertive behavior capable of extinguishing negative behaviors and situations in the company is perceived as destructive. They become soft and their leadership weak. Nonetheless, forbidding something does not make it go away. Despite being forbidden, destructiveness continues to exist, operating out of plain sight, unconscious. And unconscious destructiveness is indeed harmful to people and to companies. Abused professionals don't see that they abuse others. C-levels and leaders won't admit that they themselves are often abusive, judging, shaming, and humiliating other professionals, therefore destroying their confidence, self-esteem, motivation, and creativity. A company taken over by this dynamic will have poor results, not because of the lack of technical knowledge, technology, or investment, but due to poor behavior. Companies hire for skills, but fire for behavior. Most of us remain unconscious of destructiveness throughout life. Not my client. When the unconscious mind decided to expand her consciousness, therefore skills, she had a dream. She was visiting a museum. In display, behind thick glasses, there was an area where an atomic bomb had exploded. The museum guide explained that the radiation would inevitably increase. Through that dream, the unconscious mind submerged her in a scenario of ultimate destruction, an atomic bomb and its radiation. However, it could be safely seen through glasses, therefore consciously controlled. Since it was displayed in a museum, it could contribute to the collective culture. The unconscious mind was giving the COO the chance to integrate her unconscious psychological algorithm that prohibited destructiveness, transforming this problem into superior consciousness and new skills. This is exactly what the unconscious mind does. It transforms problems into superpowers. In fact, the repetitive problems and the painful situations we experience are processes created by the unconscious mind to develop our superpowers. When we avoid problems and painful situations, the process does not complete, but repeats. By seeing the undeniable image of destruction in her dream, the COO acknowledged her unconscious destructive behaviors, therefore other people's opinions about her being toxic. The next step was understanding how destruction can be positive. Everybody knows the stories of the superheroes. They use their superpowers to destroy negative behaviors and situations. It happens in our day-to-day -day lives. For example, surgeons, dopas, cut our bodies and destroy tumors inside of us. 
and we even pay them to be destructive with us. One of the key activities in my work is to destroy people's illusions in order to increase awareness, therefore fulfillment and success. Now, instead of continuing to repress it, my client was ready to use her destructiveness in a conscious and positive way. She developed a superpower, a psychotechnology. She developed a powerful vision, capable of spotting processes and operations causing low performance in professionals and bad results in her company. Her psychological algorithms no longer prohibited destruction, and she could now easily terminate these processes and operations. Using the image of the dream, she went from being avoided by her toxicity to being sought for due to her ability to peak professional performance and processes productivity, positively impacting the company's collective culture. Since from the perspective of the unconscious mind, there is no separation among people, her developed consciousness exerted a powerful and positive influence over others who had their performance increased and careers improved. Completely transcending the separation between the mind and concrete reality, changes in the configuration of my client's consciousness immediately reflected on her life and the new situation emerged. She was invited to be the director responsible for increasing the company's revenue a clever move of the CEO. In 2021, her company achieved its annual revenue goal by June 30th. The revenue of the other six months was extra and of course, very welcomed. Her performance was a key contribution for these results. She could now see a dynamic that was completely unconscious before and using her newly developed psychotechnology, she was able to use the mechanisms of the unconscious mind to create a very concrete consequence in her life and business. Revenue. In case you want to watch a conversation I had with her in which she presents her view on the process, you will find the link in the top right. Note that the energy of destruction, regarded as morally wrong by our society, did not disappear from my client. On the contrary, the moral prohibition to destructiveness was not only overcome, but destructiveness became a new psychological algorithm of destructiveness that determined a new skill, a skill that boosted her career, the careers of those around her, and the company's revenue. Unconscious destructiveness became conscious destructiveness. This way, it could be used consciously, precisely, and in a humane way. This way, it was appreciated by her and those around her. If you watch my already mentioned conversation with her, you wouldn't say she is destructive at all. When consciously integrated, all energies, even dark energies like destruction, feel humane and are appreciated. There was no more reason to feel guilty or ashamed of her destructiveness. On the contrary, it now boosted her self-esteem. But above all, my client was no longer controlled by a problem that she could not comprehend. On the contrary, using the image in the dream and the methodology of the paradigm of sense, she could see for herself the source code determining that destructive and toxic reality and optimize her own psychological algorithms to create a completely new self and new reality while preserving her deepest nature. More than being back in control of her life, she mastered the whole situation and moved her life, the lives of the professionals around her and the company to the next level. A dream became professional performance and revenue. The unconscious mind is not subjective or abstract. It is a precise and material thing that exerts immense influence over your life through concrete events.